Now GTA has so many heists throughout the year so I thought why don't we rank them today? And this doesn't include GTA Online heists. Might make a separate video for it. Starting with probably the least good one cause there are no bad ones. The El Banco Corrupto Grande follows a pretty straightforward formula. Get a crew, get weapons and vehicles, hit the bank, make your getaway. Simple stuff. The mission doesn't throw too many curveballs your way. Get some codes, grab a SWAT truck, storm the bank vault. About the only semi-challenge is getting the codes in the first place from the crazy ex-con. But it's pretty linear, and doesn't require much strategic thinking compared to later, more complex heists. Being one of the first bigger missions in Vice City, there's not a ton of overarching storytelling going on. You're just hired to pull this job, do it, and move on. Later games made heists an integral part of the main narrative with cutscenes, character motivations, shocking betrayals and all that good stuff Grand Theft Auto is known for. This being pretty early in the 3D GTA era, the tone of the El Banco Corrupto Grande is almost played straight, like it's just a serious bank robbery mission. Later heists got much crazier, meta, and filled with those classic over-the-top GTA humor and pop culture parodies we all love. This one's a bit drab in comparison. All that said, you have to give Rockstar credit. This was their first real stab at doing a bigger multi-part heist mission in an open-world game. For its time, it was still pretty ambitious. The developers were obviously just getting a feel for it before going all out with the amazing heists we saw in later GTA titles. You can see the groundwork and basic formula here, even if it's not the most epic entry. Next Caligula Palace Heist. GTA San Andreas. You can see the extra layers of planning and preparation. Instead of just getting some weapons and hitting a bank, CJ and the crew have to go through an elaborate scheme. The writing also does a better job of selling the extremely high stakes. It's made clear that crossing the mob running Caligula's palace is a huge risk, and you'll have made very powerful enemies if things go wrong. There's real tension versus it just being another job. The El Banco Corrupto Grande didn't have quite that same dramatic weight behind it. Whereas the Vice City bank heist was fairly self-contained, the Caligula's palace job emerges organically from CJ's overarching story of reuniting his family and taking territory from rival gangs in San Andreas. It's a big turning point mission that's tied directly into the main narrative arcs. Those kinds of narrative connections made heists feel much more impactful. On top of just being a more complicated plan, all new challenges get thrown in here like the stealth repelling section to infiltrate the casino. In Vice City, it was just get a truck and walk into the bank shooting. Having to adapt to unexpected roadblocks like that raised the gameplay bar too. Let's also not forget just how insanely huge the Caligula's palace itself is compared to the Vice City bank. Pulling a job of that size, one of the biggest buildings in the whole game, made it feel appropriately epic in scope. The Vice City bank was pretty small time by comparison, so while still not quite perfection, you can really see Rockstar taking some big creative strides with the Caligula's palace heist after their first attempt in Vice City. It was a great step up in complexity, story integration, and raising the stakes to a grand criminal opera level befitting of Grand Theft Auto's blockbuster ambitions. A clear improvement showing their heisting chops were rapidly evolving. Moving on to GTA 5, we come to the Blitz Play mission which slots in at number 7 on our ranking. There are a few reasons why I didn't place it higher. Compared to the other big GTA 5 heists like the Union Depository or Pacific Standard jobs, Blitz Play is relatively short and straightforward. It's pretty much just getting in the bank, clearing it out, and getting away amid a massive police battle. Other heists had way more setup and complex elements like crew management, planning, etc. This is more of a smash and grab. There's also not a ton of freedom or player choice involved in how you approach Blitz Play. You're kind of just along for the ride as the characters implement the plan they've already put together. Don't get me wrong, Blitz Play is still an incredibly intense, well-made heist mission. The one-and-done nature of Blitz Play might also make it feel a tad less monumental compared to heists that are these epic multi-part crimes you plan over time. Since it happens immediately and is then rewound, some of that grand heist buildup and payoff gets a bit diminished. Still awesome, but not quite as momentous if that makes sense. Ultimately, I think Blitz Play was Rockstar flexing their heist muscles and showing what the upgraded tech of GTA 5 could do right out of the gate. It laid the groundwork for the even crazier and more, pardon the pun, bank-busting heists they were gearing up to deliver throughout Michael, Franklin, and Trevor's journey. 
So while an amazing sequence and great intro mission, when you stack it up against the sheer scale, player choice, and narrative impacts of what was still to come in GTA V's other heists, Blitzplay settles in as more of an awesome amuse-bouche to kick things off, rather than the full show-stopping main course. Next, Merryweather. While not quite making the top five, the Merryweather heist still deserves its spot for being one of the most unique and challenging jobs in GTA V. What really sets this one apart is the insane curveball Rockstar throws at you midway through. You think it's going to be a typical hit on a military convoy? But then boom, Steve Haynes screws you over and you have to escape from the entire freaking Merryweather private militia assault force. Easily one of the most shocking betrayals in the game. Speaking of that second half, the level of intensity just ramps up to incredible heights. This leads to my next point. Because the mission goes so far off the rails, you're forced to frantically adapt and improvise tactics on the fly to battle your way through each new wave of enemies. It's perhaps the most unpredictable and dynamically challenging heist requiring quick thinking. An absolutely jaw-dropping, memorable set piece. To overcome those incredible odds, you really have to utilize your crew's special abilities, split them up strategically, and coordinate teamwork like never before. Other heists were more individually focused, this one crushed you if you didn't operate as a tight unit. Number 5. The Polito Score What's great about this heist is how it scratches that immersive planning itch. You have to grind and prep for it by carefully scoping the countryside bank, disabling security systems, getting vehicle disguises and so on. It has that great layer of realism. Then, in execution, the whole rural Polito Bay setting provides a really refreshing contrast to the usual urban GTA heists. But if you want the craziest possible challenge, Polito offers the ability to go in loud and aggressive mode, turning the whole thing into an absolute brutal onslaught. Take a wrong turn, and the respawning military shows zero mercy. It's incredible. Ultimately, while not an absolute game-changer, the Polito score combines excellent preparation, a fresh rural setting, and an exhilarating anything-can-happen intensity that makes it a wonderful addition to the heist canon in its own right. Just a few spots shy of ultimate greatness, but we're getting there. What do you think of these rankings so far? The Bureau Raid from GTA V deserves its placement at number 4 for being an absolute monumental mission that essentially plays like an epic action movie finale. From the moment you breach through the wall of the FBI building in that armored truck, you know you're in for something special. But what really elevates the Bureau Raid is the non-stop theatrics and crazy set pieces, having to rappel down the exterior, battle through the underground tunnels, breach into the heavily fortified server room, and then make that heart-pounding escape back through the entire gauntlet you came in. It's scripted GTA Mayhem at its cinematic best. The variety of gameplay alongside the relentless action sequences like the crane jump make it feel like you're living out a die-hard or Mission Impossible plot. The high stakes and constantly ticking timers also ratchet up the intensity. You're very aware that you're ripping off a federal institution, so the pressure is always on to keep pushing forward before being overrun. While the heist preparation is relatively straightforward, the execution is Grand Theft Auto's combat mechanics pushed to their absolute limits with a beautiful combination of shooting, driving, and set-piece setups that showcase everything GTA does best. It's a true showcase of Rockstar's incredible mission design craft that has you feeling like the living embodiment of an action hero stuntman. Just an absolute barnstorming thrill ride from start to finish. The Bureau Raid is epic heisting entertainment. You know, this one kind of feels like a nice palate cleanser after the insanity of the Bureau Raid heist. It's a much smaller, more contained and straightforward score, but I actually really vibe with its back-to-basics approach. At its core, the Jewel Store job is just a classic smash and grab. Go in loud, grab the loot, and get out before the cops arrive. There's something supremely satisfying about the simplicity of that setup. It reminds me of pulling off slick diamond heists in classic heist movies. Just a few professionals doing their job cleanly and efficiently. But Rockstar still injects it with plenty of great little touches. The little pre-mission vignettes with the characters also give it some nice personal flavor. And once you hit the store, it's just pure precision chaos. Where the mission really shines though is in those player choice moments. On a pure gameplay level, the Jewel Store job is bone achievely rock solid. But it also just oozes crisp classic heist movie atmosphere from beginning to end in a way I absolutely love. It's tightly paced. It's tense. For me, that vibe alone of taking part in just an impeccably executed intimate little heist like you'd see in a Michael Mann flick is what makes it such a personal favorite. 
Sometimes you don't need massively over-the-top destructive spectacle. Sometimes you just want to pull off one perfect precision crime as a well-oiled unit. The jewel store job absolutely nails that feeling in such a stylishly stripped-down way, earning it the number three spot on my list. A real underrated gem in my opinion. Coming in at the hash two spot is the iconic three-leaf clover heist from GTA 4. And man, does this one deserve to be ranked so highly. This was Rockstar really flexing their heisting muscles and showing what the new gen of consoles could do in terms of complex cinematic mission design. Right from the nighttime pre-mission planning, you know you're in for something special. The moody atmosphere, the crew going over every nitty gritty detail of the plan, it just sucks you right into that heist movie mindset. The preparation alone is so engrossing. What really sets Three Leaf Clover apart though is how it continuously evolves and throws new challenges at you. It's this relentless, ever-escalating onslaught that makes it such a white-knuckle ride. You're genuinely unsure how Nico and the crew will make it out alive at certain points. The desperate final sprint across the subway tracks might still be one of the most harrowing segments in any GTA game. On top of the unreal action set pieces, you have great character moments too. Three Leaf Clover is really the full realization of Rockstar's heisting vision. Brilliant pre-planning, flawless action choreography, totally unpredictable but grounded scenarios, fantastic performances, and grade-A white-knuckle tension from start to finish. It takes everything they established with Vice City and San Andreas' scores and dials it up to 11 with that next-gen level of depth and complexity. All right, we've reached the pinnacle. The hash one best heist in GTA history has to go to the big score finale from GTA 5. This is just an absolute masterclass in game design and storytelling that perfectly caps off everything the game was building towards. From a pure gameplay perspective, the big score is the ultimate expression of everything that makes GTA's heisting so much fun. You get to plan out every tiny detail. Entry routes, crew rolls and loadouts, vantage points, getaway routes. No stone is left unturned in terms of preparation and making you feel like you're precisely engineering this enormous job. And the variety of approaches you can take to actually executing the heist is just chef's kiss levels of player freedom. It's that openness that has made it tremendously replayable for years on end. But what really elevates the big score to absolute legendary status is the sense of crescendoing payoff it delivers narratively and cinematically. You've been through the ringer with Michael, Franklin, and Trevor at this point. Their relationships frayed, their secrets threatening to burn everything down. So to have their fates interweave and culminate in this one massive make-or-break score, the stakes couldn't feel higher on both a personal and professional level. And Rockstar doesn't disappoint delivering not just an intensely thrilling heist with jaw-dropping set pieces like that meteor shipment siege or the final hoverbike chase, but weaving in incredible character resolutions and narrative beats that properly cap off everyone's arcs. The heist and the story crescendo together masterfully. That's why the big score doesn't just stand tall as GTA's best heist, but for me, it's a front-runner for one of the greatest missions across any game, period. The level of ambition, technical wizardry, player choice, and fulfillment of thematic payoff across both gameplay and story is unmatched. Truly the best. And this was the ranking. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.